Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this video we're going to do a quick Lightroom tutorial demonstrating a really powerful feature that you might not actually know about when it comes to fixing the colors in your photos. Now Lightroom added this feature a while back, but they kind of did it very sneakily, so you might not even know it exists, you might not be taking advantage of it, and I want to make sure that you know exactly where it is, how to use it, and how to get the most out of it so that your photo editing is that much better. Are you ready? Let's get into it. All right, so let's get into it together. The tool we're going to be looking at today is the hue slider that has been added to the adjustment brush section of Lightroom. Now this is available in Lightroom CC Classic and Lightroom CC. In Lightroom CC, it's this thing right here when you go into the brush panel. So no matter which version you're using today, this is going to be effective for you. All right, so what exactly does this do and why is this helpful? Lightroom kind of snuck this feature in here a couple updates ago. And the reason it's so helpful is because when you have a photo with a certain color, in this case, we have a pumpkin patch that is all orange, we can go to our HSL panel. And as you would normally do, you can change the hue of say these pumpkins by grabbing the orange slider and grabbing it and taking it to the left or right. Now we'll make it more red or more yellow. And that's about all we can do. Now the problem with this is that if I want to say make some of the pumpkins more red and others more green, I can't do that. I'm kind of confined to changing all of the colors in one direction or another. However, and now that we have this adjustment brush feature, we can simply select a pumpkin of our choice. Let's say this big guy right here, the absolute epitome of all that a pumpkin can and should be in this world. Make sure our mask is good by pressing O to see that overlay and notice that it's not working because our flow is all the way down. So let's change that again. We're going to reselect this guy like a so. I like to just click a few times. Most of the time that'll do a good job. And then we can grab our hue and change the color of that pumpkin. And what you're also going to notice is that unlike with our hue down here, where we can really only make a slight change, make the pumpkins more red or make them more yellow, but not really take them all the way to purple or blue. We can do whatever we want essentially with this particular use slider. Take it all the way, all the colors of the rainbow. So we can make a Skittles pumpkin patch, make a new adjustment layer right up here, grab this pumpkin. He is the chosen one. And we can make this one say, I don't know, what do we feel like? What are we feeling today? Purple. We're gonna make this pumpkin purple. Grab one more just to show you how easy and quick this can be. Now, of course, your adjustment brush is going to do a lot better job with the auto mask if you've got an image that has a lot of contrast between the objects. If you've got something that's really busy, it's gonna be a little bit more work to isolate that, but I'll show you exactly how to do that later. So we can change both of these pumpkins together, or I could actually grab this, duplicate this mask, and erase off of one of these pumpkins. Hello, make sure my flow is all the way up. Erase off this pumpkin. So now we're really only affecting this one on the right here and change that color as well. So you can do this for as many different parts of the image as you like to change it however you want. This is super powerful, not just for pumpkin patches, but also for photos of people in particular. So this portrait right here, our subject, beautiful skin, beautiful hair, but let's say that I want to edit them and make the hair a little bit more red while leaving the skin tones the same. Well, the problem is with the previous method of changing our HSL, we would go down here to our skin tones and the oranges, and you can see that we're affecting the hair and the skin together. I can't really adjust them separately. Well, now we can grab our adjustment brush, and I could try and just brush out the hair and change the color of the hair like that. The problem is going to be, if we zoom in here, you're going to notice that hair is very hard. One of the hardest things to mask out because we've got so many little strands in here, it would be next to impossible to do manually. And the auto mask, we can give it a try. It's going to do an okay job, but it's really not going to get every little bit, and it's going to bleed out onto the background. We don't want that. So the better method in these kind of situations is say, okay, what is the simplest thing that I could affect here? Obviously, it's going to be her skin. So instead of trying to mask out the hair, we're going to mask out her skin, just like that. And depending on the intensity of the effect you're trying to achieve, you're going to want to be more or less careful with how accurate this mask is. In my case, since we're just doing a subtle change and making her hair a little bit more red, I'm not going to worry about getting it absolutely perfect. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our HSL panel and change everything in the oranges like this. So we'll make her hair as red as we want it to be. And then I'm going to go back to my adjustment brush hue, and we're going to correct the skin back to where it was naturally, which was more around... I don't know, there-ish. Make sure your mask is good. 
So this way we can independently adjust the hair and the skin without having to do a really fancy mask and mask out the hair one strand at a time. So that's how you can do that. Let's look at one more together for more extreme changes and kind of showing you how this tool can be combined with one other tool in Lightroom you may not be using at all yet. Also, if this has been helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button really quick and leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking and if I miss something, let me answer your questions. Anyways, back to it. Let's take a look at this photo. We've got a nice rose and we've got a nice pink background. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's close this for a second and grab our hue panel. Now we could adjust the hue of the rose, but the problem is that when we do so, obviously it's affecting our background. So what do we do? Well, you've seen it before, you'll see it again, we would mask out this rose. Now to save some time, I've already gone ahead and masked out the rose because it took a little bit of effort to just zoom in here and go through and make sure I got the mask pretty much perfect. Looks like not completely perfect though. Anyways, fun fact, if you actually look closely, when you zoom in, you can see this rose isn't even real, which made the mask that much less effective and makes the photo feel a little bit weird. So if you're wondering why this rose doesn't feel like a real rose, that's why, it's not. Anyways, so what we can do is we can obviously grab our hue and we can take this rose and shift it to where we want it. But you're going to see that unlike the pumpkins where it just looked great, this particular image, it's not really working for us. Why is that? Well, it's because you might have gotten the hue to the kind of hue you're looking for, the color you're after, but your saturation and your luminance are not looking realistic. So your eye is a master at looking at something and knowing whether it's natural or not, whether it's right or something is just off about it. So the problem here is that although our rose is blue in hue, the luminance is just not right. So if I took my luminance down here, probably the easier way actually would be to grab our exposure on this adjustment brush. We take our luminance down and you can see it looks maybe, well, it doesn't really look good because it's a blue rose. It's unnatural to begin with, but it's also because our contrast isn't right. If we raise our highlights a little bit, we lower our blacks. Okay, now it looks maybe a little bit more realistic, quote unquote. It's still not good. I'm not saying it is, but the point is we need to make sure that we get these other factors right. The hue, the saturation, and the luminance all have to work together in our selection or it's just not going to look right to your eye. So let's try a more practical example and say we want to turn this rose red. How do we do that? Well, we can grab our hue, take it towards red a bit, but you're going to see that in this particular example, we really don't wind up with a red rose no matter where we go. I can take it probably around there is the most red I can find. If you've got a specific color you want to add and you just can't get it with this hue slider, which is going to be the most natural effect if you can make it happen. If it's not working for you, go down to the color section of your adjustment brush layer and we can grab whatever color we want and add it on top of our already existing hue, saturation, everything else adjustments. So in this case, we can grab our nice red for a red rose. You can see we're still pink, but that's because our luminance isn't right. So we'll lower our luminance down, we'll increase our contrast, and basically what we're trying to do is match what this rose, if it were red and there was a red rose in this scene, how would it interact with the light in this scene so that it matches everything, the lighting on her face, the background, we want it to feel natural. That's what's going to make it feel right if we can nail all those things. So we need to increase our contrast a bit, raise the white so we have a little bit more brightness happening, lower the exposure a little bit more. And you can see that we're getting a lot closer to a realistic looking red rose. Here's before and here's after. Not too bad. Now, how do we take this a step further? If you're ever wondering when your colors just aren't working, what's going on, my number one recommendation, go to unsplash.com or any website. You could go to Google Images. I don't care. And type in the object or the scene that you're looking for. So in this case, we looked for a red rose. Now, what we're going to want to do is find a photo that is as close as possible to the original lighting situation of the photo you're editing. So in this case, we want more soft kind of indoor light, not really super contrasty. So this photo wouldn't work. This one's outside. That wouldn't work. That's pretty contrasty, pretty contrasty outside. That's close. We can maybe use this one. I think probably the closest one is going to be this shot right here. It was clearly taken indoors with pretty soft, flattering light. It's got a rose color that I like. So I'm going to download that photo import it into Lightroom. I've already done that to save some time. It's right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our photo, make sure I'm in the develop module by pressing D, and we're going to look for our compare tool. Now if it's not showing up, like in this case, it's probably because you've hidden the toolbar. So press T on your keyboard to show and hide that. If for whatever reason you've got something else showing up here and not these options, it might be because you've selected one of these. So the easiest way to reset it, I just hit the R key, which is going to bring up my ruler and go back to T and that'll show and hide the toolbar and sometimes it will reset it. So 
That's what you do. Anyways, we grab our image. We go to our comparison view, which is this RA thing. I don't know why it doesn't have a C. I feel like that would be better. It's actually called a reference view. That's probably why. Then we're going to grab the photo we want to reference, in this case, our roses. And we can compare the colors of our rose to the color of the rose in this photo. And as you can see, I really am not that close. It felt sort of close when I was looking at it and not using a reference. But now that I see the reference, I can much more easily match the actual kind of natural colors, saturation, the luminance of what's going on in what a realistic looking rose would be. So we can grab a little more saturation, perhaps. I'm looking perhaps a little bit too purple. So we can try adjusting our hue a little bit here. We definitely need more contrast going on. So I'm going to raise the highlights up, increase our contrast, maybe make it a little bit more bright, somewhere around there. And now we're getting a lot closer than where we were two seconds ago. So here's before and here's after. We've come a long way in making it look like a realistic red rose. Obviously, I'm not saying this is the perfect Photoshop job. This is just a quick example of what's possible when you're using these tools inside of Lightroom, especially the brand new hue slider and color thing. <laughs> I don't know what that's actually called. The color adder inside of Lightroom together in conjunction, super powerful. And when you add in the fact that you can also adjust your hue here, so we could grab our reds and we could shift them a little bit more and our oranges, whatever this started off as, peach, pink, magenta. We can tweak it a little bit more, just get things how we like it. Here's before and here's after. It's actually pretty crazy what Lightroom is now allowing us to do without needing to go over into programs like Photoshop, which always makes me super happy when things are just easy and simple. So if this video was helpful, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button. And if you think you're going to use this technique, what do you think you're going to use it for? Let me know in the comments below. Leave me a comment. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate it. And hey, if you need some new presets, I will leave a free download link in the description. Be sure to check those out. In the meantime, I wish you the very best with your editing. Go create something awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.